So we're gonna take a look at two apps that you can download, one for Android and one for either Android or iOS, your iPhone. Um, for Android, we're gonna look at OSC Hook. That's spelled O-S-C-H-O-O-K, all one word. If you just Google that, you'll find the Play Store, or you can look for it on your phone's Play Store. So when you find OSC Hook, it's completely free. It's a super rad uh, little, a, sorry, it is a super rad little program that will actually take the sensors from your phone, and you can actually output them over the wireless network to your computer and into Touch Designer, which we'll be using. It's pretty fantastic. I already have it installed. The other is ZigSim, Z-I-G-S-I-M. This is a new one, and it's a new bad boy on the block, and over here you can see that it does a lot of the same stuff, has a little bit of a simpler menu, but it takes a little bit of understanding to get used to it. We'll go over them both, but you can find that on the App Store or on the Google Play Store. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize this. Actually, real quick, this is ZigSim's uh, website right here. There are links to all of this in the video description and on the web page for the Digital Sideshow, which is what I'm doing this for. Yay! All right, I'm going to go ahead and minimize that. And on the back here, you can see that I actually have my phone. This is my phone. Look at that. Boom, I'm moving it, and we can see my phone. I'm going to use the mouse to kind of point things out um, while we use this. Um, I'm actually using this through Touch Designer. So, see, in Touch Designer, whoops, this is the project that I like to use to do stuff, or the thing we'll be learning, but let me go ahead and just maximize this again. So, we're going to start with OSC Hook, and just take a look at what OSC Hook is and what it can do. So, I'm going to click on it right there, and here we have OSC Hook. Now, if I go ahead and scroll through here, you can see it will give a bunch of information about my phone um, and my phone sensors like rotation, light sensor, um, compass, all that good jazz. So I actually have to go up here to this little drop down menu, click to open that in, and there's a few things we need to do in order to get our computer and our actual uh, phone communicating with each other. First things first, they both have to be on the exact same wireless network. Right now I'm connected to the same network on both of these. So just so you can see, boop, boop, boop. Let's go ahead and open that up. Netgear 40, Netgear 40. We are on the same wireless network. Okay, we can get rid of that. Let's go back to the thing. Here we go. Um, and the next thing, so once you have that, you need to know the IP address of your computer. So the IP address is kind of a um, address that gets set up through your router that says how things communicate with this computer. So the second line here is the IP port setup. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And we can see 192.168.1.9 and port 5000. These are the two really important codes that you need. So I'm going to go ahead and to find, to make sure this is correct, I'm going to go to my wireless here, and I'm going to go to my properties, and let me just move this over. You can see I have some properties, blah, 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 and here's my IP address right here, 192.168.1.9, and you'll see IP4V address. Now, this is a little bit different on a Mac. Um, I'll try to leave a link of how to get to it on a Mac. Uh, hopefully, that will come sooner than later. So I'm going to go ahead and X out. This is correct, 192.168.1.9. So make sure you put that into there. And you can just click on that, and you'll see it gives you all the numbers and stuff. I don't need that. The second, whoops, whoopsie doozy shoozy poozy. Let's go back to OSC hook. There we go. The second thing you need is your port number right here. Right now this is set to 5,000. I can set it to any, pretty much any number I want. It's good to stick to the thousands of some sort. 5,000 is a good number. Um, this is the port that um, this specific app will go out to to get to Touch Designer. So I'm going to hit OK on that. That looks good to me. The second thing we want to do, boom, I'm going to touch that hamburger menu up there. We get a few other options like OSC timing. Now on this you can go um, how many times a second do you want this to go? So like one time a second, one time every five seconds, twice a second, four times a second, I think this is like 10 times a second, 50 milliseconds, that's the experimental. I like it, it's fast, I'm using that. And then let's go to OSC address setup. When we click on that one, once again, I'll hit okay, just 
So it is hamburger menu, OSC address setup, and this is where you can see all of the different kinds of sensors you can get. Accelerometer, linear acceleration, gravity. Now your phone might not have all these, but you can just check them all and whatever comes through will come through. It's pretty cool. So I have all of these checked off. So I can get rid of them by unchecking or get them by checking them. I'm gonna hit OK. And, I'm, and now I can just go ahead and hit Start. So right now this is set to compass, but let's go ahead and um, scroll back a few. I'm gonna go to, let's look at linear acceleration. So when I start to move my phone around, you'll see that I'm, I'm actually moving my phone in my hand, which you can't actually see, and now I'm shaking my phone. Here, listen. That is me shaking my phone, and you can see what's coming from that. I can go to my gravity accelerometer. Let's go to the light. Let's see, light sensor. So right now, this is my light sensor. If I put my hand over the top of my phone, you can see that go all the way down to zero. If I take it off, it goes up. If I turn on a desk lamp, take a listen. Desk lamp. Oh man, look at that shoot up. If I hold it right up to the desk lamp. So this is actually showing all of that awesome, awesome data from the sensors on my phone. I'm gonna go ahead and minimize this back screen and just kind of take this over a little bit so we can still see it. Um, let's go here. I don't need this on the background. So I'm going to X that out. So in Touch Designer, if I want to actually communicate and show this stuff, I would actually use OSC. Um, and just to show you, so I'm just moving things around. With Touch Designer open, if I hit Tab and I go to Chop, this green one right here, I hit the Tab, I'm hitting Chop, and then I'm going into this search up here and typing in OSC. And this is where we have OSC in. I'm just gonna click on that and drop it down. Now I can zoom into stuff by just kind of scrolling in with my middle scroll wheel. Now all I need to do is take this OSC. If I click on it, you can see all the settings over to the right here. It's on 10,000 right now for the network port. This is that port we set up. If I change it to 5,000, now you can see, I'm gonna zoom in, Oh, now we have all that same sensor data coming in to Touch Designer. So that's pretty fantastic. All right, let's take a look at the other app now. I'm going to go ahead and just, um, oh, no, I'll keep playing. I'm going to go ahead and full screen this again. I'm going to hit stop on OSC hook. And I'm going to go ahead and hit the back button. And now we're going to take a look at this other one. If you're on... Um, an iPhone, ZigSim will work on that. It will also work here on uh, the Google Play Store. I'm going to click on the ZigSim. This is Zig Simulator, and it's opening up. Now, all I have to do is you see all these checkmarked things along the right here? These are all of my sensors that I might be able to use. Some I have, some I don't, but I can just, I'm just kind of clicking them off and on. I'm just going to make sure they're all clicked. Then I need to go over to the settings right there. Boom, settings, and here we go. So this gives us a couple different options. There's UDP and TCP. These are different protocols that you might use in Touch Designer to bring in um, actual, uh, just to bring in data. Um, check whether or not your, your thing is using UDP or TCP. I'm gonna go ahead and just touch on my OSCN messaging protocol, UDP. So these are all using UDP. So I want to make sure it's set to UDP. Now there's an IP address. This is the same as before. So once again, I'm going to click here on my Netgear or on my internet wireless. Go to my properties. Let's go down and find my, oh, that's too big. That's too big. I don't need it that big. Here we go. Right here, 192.168.1.9. So I need to put that in. Whoops, wrong one. I need to put that in there to replace this. Let's go ahead and delete those. 192.168.1.9. That's what I need. Port 5000, I'm gonna keep it on that same port. Cool, I'm gonna go ahead and minimize this. Now, as you can see underneath this, this has uh, JSON or OSC. JSON is another kind of protocol uh, or message format. OSC is what we wanna use. Now we have a target message rate per second, so I'm gonna leave it on 60 frames. And under here, we can put a device UUID. So this is an ID. What is the name of the device gonna be? I'm gonna call this device 
rad phone. By default, it should have, oh, not Pagone, rad phone. By default, it's going to have a big long number. I'm not going to worry about that. Compass angle below that is whether it's faced up or not. I'm just going to hit the back key on my thing there. And this all looks good. So now I can go ahead and hit start. Now, as you can see, we have all of the numbers, the accelerometer, the gravity, the compass, blah, 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 all these cool things, the light proximity, um, true or false proximity is how, if I have uh, my hand over the phone, it kind of uses the light sensor. Let's go ahead and just minimize that a little bit. Um, whoops. And as you can see, if we go back into, and I want to make this a little bit bigger, there we go. If we go back into Touch Designer, you can see now I have all this all all this new stuff under Rad Phone. The rest of this is like OSC hook. I'm gonna go to I'm gonna go ahead and touch my OSC in, and that's because I have it on the same 5000 port coming in. I'm gonna hit Pulse on that, and that's gonna reset this whole thing. So now if we look, when I start like moving stuff around, look at the the light sensor up here. If I bring it up to the light. Oh, it's in the thousands. We see the accelerometer. We can see like how I'm actually like rotating it. So I am moving my phone around a lot. And so these values from here are reflected over here. In fact, something cool. If we look at the compass down here, I have a magnet in my hand right now. And I am actually moving that magnet around my phone right there. At compass one, you'll see what that is. So it's pretty fantastic. You can actually use magnets as sensors because that is how the compass in our phone works, the Earth's magnetic pull. So I can change stuff based on where that magnet is. Also, a cool thing that they have as part of, um, as part of this is touch. So if I touch my phone, boom, it will give me a touch and the X, Y position. If I put a second finger on the same time, oh, look at that, X, Y positions. It also has some force. Um, I'm not sure how well that force actually works. Eh, it doesn't seem to work that well. It's trying to give me force, but it doesn't give me anything above one. So that's that. So that's a couple of the uh, awesome, so those two apps, um, ZigSim and, and OSC Hook are great for getting sensor data. Now, let me quickly just show you one more thing. I'm gonna go to the Google Play Store and I'm gonna search OSC. There's tons and tons of awesome things. Touch OSC is a very popular one, so you can make your own OSC uh, menus and things like that, but OSC Control is a free version of that by a friend of mine, Adam Katz, he's wonderful. And he makes these, uh, these little, these little um, control panels that you can use from your phone to control stuff, and you can use that in like Touch Designer too. So let me go ahead and just quit out of ZigSim and let me see, I'm pretty sure I have oh, uh, that on here. I've got lots and lots of apps, y'all. Um, let me go ahead into my apps. Let's go ahead into search, and I'm just going to type in the word OSC. There we go. Um, oh, do I not have it on this phone? I might not have... What, what was that called again? Um, Oscar Wilde, super rad. Um, <laughs> OSC controller, it might be just under controller in his earlier version. C-O-N. OSC controller, there it is. And I'm gonna pop that up real quick just to show off this super rad thing and a different way to actually work with this stuff. So if I go ahead and hit the settings tab up here, boom. Now uh, 168, so IP address, I need to change this over. Um, there we go. Let's go 192.168.1.6, if I remember correctly. Let me look at that. 9, 1.9, that would have been, that would have been the wrong thing. Whoops, there we go. 1.9. And then I'm going to make the port right here, port 5000. And I can rename the path Cats for my buddy Adam Cats. Cats with a Z. Okay. Now I can go to Start Connection. Um, let me go ahead to this right here. Back to my OSC1. Pulse it. And 
let's go ahead and hit close and we'll see that I have this menu up here and I can click and move these sliders now it's it's actually keeping up really well it doesn't look like it because the actual video is delayed here but I can click the different buttons and there's a few different menus that I can use that allow me to do stuff. So I can actually use this OSC controller that Adam Katz made, God bless his soul, um, to actually do some pretty rad stuff. Now the version I have on my phone is an earlier test version that he had me doing, but um, the newer version is much better and prettier. I should have used that for this, but who cares? Who cares? It's cool because it's cool. All right, well, those are three awesome OSC apps that can get you started, and in the next video, we'll actually look at how to take this data and use it in other stuff in Touch Designer.